Hello, are you a content creator for your faculty, department, or team? Then you may be aware that there's a New York University branding theme and a new editor being introduced in WordPress 5. In this tutorial series, my goal is to get you up and running with the new editor and the new theme quickly, easily, and efficiently. Let's get started. Hello again, my name is Ali Sadekan from York University Libraries. I welcome to WordPress 5 Bloomberg York 2020 tutorial series. I believe the best way to learn is through practice. In this tutorial series, I've broken down the information into multiple videos for you to easily pause, rewind, rewatch later, and specifically if you want to see a particular part that you want to learn from, you can. And of course, throughout the whole series, we'll be using the New York 2020 theme. So if you come up with any questions or comments, do let me know. Let's begin. Welcome to the first part of WordPress 5 Gloomberg York tutorial series. Features, comparison, and layout overview. If you have any questions about anything in this video or comments, be sure to let me know through email or if you are watching this on YouTube, leave a comment. Let's go over what we will learn today in this video. WordPress releases many fixes and features, but we will only mention those that will make an impact on us. We'll do a quick comparison of the old versus the new. And finally, we will go over the layout of the editor. What is where, where to find, where to look, what options are available. So what is new? Well, in the current version of WordPress, at the time of this tutorial, is 5.5. .5. It has many new features and security patches since 4.9, but the two significant updates that impact us, the content creators and editors, are a completely new editor codenamed Gutenberg. It is a block-based editor which allows users to create beautiful layouts using content blocks. We'll go more into blocks in the part two of the video in this series. The second is no more sidebars. You may remember this in the old York University theme where you would have widgets on the side while it's gone. This is a bit of a mixed bag because I will miss it, although I cannot deny the new page area and the real estate that we will gain. Reusable block gets us around this issue, which we'll learn about in the third video series. This doesn't of course mean that you cannot have the sidebar, but out of the box, it's not going to be there. All right, let's have a look and see the differences. OK, for the comparison, I have set up two sandboxes. This is my WordPress 4.0 sandbox. And the other one that I've set up is the 5.5 sandbox with the new theme. And just to compare, we're just going to compare the sample pages. So I'm going to go ahead and edit this one. And this is typical that you're all used to. You know, you have your title here, your body. You can search to HTML or visual. You have your comments. Let's say I don't want to do a pingback. On the side, you have your publish options, your status, your visibility, your page attributes, your feature image. And now let's go to the new editor. Over here, I'm going to go ahead and click Edit. So in the new editor, as you can see, it's very clean and open. You have your top taskbar. You have your sidebar, which, I will, which is hidden by default as a 5.5. And you can show it up by clicking the settings. So in the same aspect, this is your title. This is your body. So everything is a block 
which basically means all the content is wrapped as a block. So it could be a heading block, a paragraph block, an image block, and all those components are considered all as a block and pieces of a page, pretty much a components that make up the whole page. On the right side, we have the same as we, as we had in the four, which is the visibility, the publish, you know, you can change the link, feature image, allowing comments, changing the template. On the top bar, I'll start from the left. View pages, this will, if I click it, will take me back to the dashboard area of the pages view and it'll, where you have all the page listings. I'm just gonna click it just to show it to you guys. See right here, and right now we only have three pages. I'm gonna go back to edit. All right, moving on. Next one is adding a block. Go ahead, click there. Oh, I guess there we go. So now the block panel shows up. That's what that button's for. And you can also let's say I'm gonna go ahead and click heading, and it'll break take me there. So I can say this is a heading. And if I want the other way, you can add a block is through here as well. So I can just say perfect. I can't spell. All right. So that was the adding block from the task menu, but you can also add it from here. Next one is the edit and select. Now this can be helpful if let's say, for example, I wanted to, you know, go to this block and choose it specifically because things can get cluttered as you build pages. So this is a nice way to specifically select it. And all of a sudden you see my little edit menu pop up there. I'm gonna change this to change this quote to something else. Oh, that's a good thing it has autocorrect. And there we go. Uh, this will easily tie into my next one, which is the undo redo button. So for example, I changed my mind again and I said, you know what, what was I thinking? I'm gonna go ahead and say undo, undo. And I can redo it too, if I wanted to. Nothing new there. Next, we have the content structure. Now this is helpful for all the writers out there. If you're writing maybe a post that you want within a certain words, um, maybe you're doing a amount of headings you have, the amount of paragraphs you have, maybe you want to load the page faster and you don't want to have a lot of blocks. Maybe you want to keep track of how many blocks or how much how long the page becomes. Next one is the block navigation. Now this is a simple page, so you can easily, you know, I can go ahead and click here and it'll automatically take me there I uh, can select and edit but as you build pages it will get complicated and nested and grouped and we will explore that in the next tutorial series this is your if right now I have it published but I can switch back to draft mode if I wanted to uh, this is just doing auto saving there preview I can preview it quickly in a tablet view, what it will look like, mobile view, or I can pre preview it in a new tab, which is my preferred method, by the way. Oh, it is actually doing it right there. There we go. And this, you can see it with the, all the headings and the footers. And I'll go close this. I'm going to go back to desktop mode. The other one is, of course, update. I'm just going to click it just for this. The settings we've already talked about, but what we didn't really go into was this is your document, which was like the WordPress 4.0. Just to show you. 
this right here. And the block is the configuration menu for the specific block that you're on. And this menu changes based on the type of block you're editing. Again, I we will explore that in the next video series. The last one, the Shish Kebab or Kebab menu, you get a little bit of more options. Now, as you can see, there's a editing bar of my block here, but let's say I don't want that and I prefer that I want to keep everything up top here. So I can click this and now it's moved up here. So no matter which block I'm working on, the options for it will change over here, not above it. It's a matter of preference that you prefer. I like to see them on top so I know which block, but it's up to everyone. There's a spotlight mode. So this is if, because I'm focused on this, I want only this to be bolted, everything else grays out. Click on here. And now this is in the spotlight. Again, these are options that you can play around with or preference. Full screen mode. Now you might be wondering, where's the little sidebar that was there? Well, there it is. All your posts, media, you can go back to if you want. But because when you're editing, they wanted to have a clear space. So there's a full screen mode. So work without distraction. This is our code and visual editor. So this was the HTML and the visual switcher. We'll go back right here. That has been moved to. Now we are all in this HTML mode. And blocks, as you will notice, this is something new. This is how blocks are defined in WordPress 5.5. Oh, wait, Gutenberg. I'll go back to the visual. The block manager and all the other options we will see in the other video series that will come up. And that is it for the comparison. Hello and welcome back. And congratulations on finishing the first video. Let's summarize what we learned. We had a quick look at the old editor versus the new editor. We looked at the top bar options, the side panel, the document and the block. We looked at different modes you can have of uh, editing. You can go into full screen mode. You can have top bar. You can have spotlight for while you're editing content. And we also looked at different preview modes. In the next video, we'll go more into blocks and how you can start creating content for with them. So keep on learning and I will see you there. Cheers. Thank you for watching WordPress 5 Gutenberg York 2020 series. If you have any questions or comments about this video or the tutorial series, you can email them to me at sadhikan at yorku.ca. Or if you have any theme related technical issues or you're a faculty member, you can email them to uit at askit at yorku.ca. Take care and stay safe.